Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I was not in the in the discussion mode, uh, but now I was added to the discussion mode. So, okay, now that now I also can see my picture, but not the other person who is joining the panel. Ah, okay, it's coming up. Yep, it's coming up. So let's start with a question. I have a question for you. Uh, could you tell us about your university programs and how they integrate practical experience and skills training into a formal academic setting? Uh -huh. um, I, I prepared a short introduction, but um, do we start with the panel or should I just answer the question? The presentation. Pardon? You can start with your presentation if you have one. Yes, I, I prepared because, um, ah, okay, so hmm, let me have a look. Um, sorry. Uh, no, no, I cannot share it because otherwise it takes too much time now because uh, I use normally a, another um, software and Zoom is, Zoom says it cannot. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, please, sorry, um, ask your question again. Yes. Uh, could you tell us about your university programs and how they integrate practical experience and skills uh, skills training into a formal academic setting? Yeah. So I, as I as I told uh, Elvis in in the um, emails we had before um, that. Um, I'm from a master program, so we, we have um, all the, the, the education, the German education system before. We have the schools and there, there are, let's say, trainings like gardening, laboratories and so on. So the, the students are, the, the, uh, are really skilled in, let's say, practical work, doing something from, let's say, early years on. And then we have the dual system. Um, like um, uh, people are working, if they are 18, 19, 20, they can choose a dual system, for example, going for an apprenticeship in a an hotel and um, also have school besides. So this means they have a field experience, they learn about um, hospitality and they also have some weeks of school during the year. And then they, we have the bachelor system, it's the next level. And in the bachelor system, we have obligatory internships, like uh, this could be some weeks, this could also be up to three months. Um, and they have to do own projects there. And then um, my program is a master program. So what we have is uh, internships, um, transfer projects, uh, things like workrooms. That means we have special modules where the, the students from different faculties, they can join together and they have to design a project, for example, together with an external partner and then come up and we as the professors, we decide if this is worth for, let's say, four credits or however. But the main thing would uh, also Elvis Cothera has experienced with was our internship. Um, our master students can choose for an internship and this is means um, they have to decide for an external partner till the 1st of October. And then they have to stay uh, 19 weeks in this uh, internship and they have to design an own project this, this means an own responsibility for something together with um, the, the company. And um, I had uh, the first student um, two years ago and last year four students um, in um, uh, the company of Elite's Travel. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Brazel. Uh, my next question is Professor Villa. How can we expand this type of practical experience within universities in Albania? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, express my gratitude for being and participating in this conference. So the conference uh, started the last year with a great success and it seems that it continues with the same success. And I strongly believe that this will conclude with a, a very so um, important discussions and uh, 
with results uh, which will be useful for all the uh, participants and attendants. Well, um, in order to be in the line with the uh, topic of our discussions, uh, I would like to start with first with the mission of the university nowadays. Uh, there is a kind of global discussion about the mission university, uh, whether the university should provide only access to knowledge or also to combine it with practical skills uh, training because uh, the graduates, the students are supposed to meet after the graduation the market and they should be somehow prepared for it and to, uh, to meet the demands of the market because we have some colleagues or uh, keynote speakers, uh, one uh, the representative of one of the uh, biggest companies in Albania, he listed some uh, skills which are or uh, some kind of uh, um, needs uh, for the uh, for the workers, uh, which should uh, which some of them are mandatory uh, in order to become part of this company. So, and uh, this kind of discussion uh, between just uh, gi uh, giving access or providing access to knowledge or combining uh, it with practical skills. This is something uh, which has not been clarified so until now for many reasons. And uh, to start with universities in Albania, so unfortunately I see kind of lack of uh, uh, such provision of practical skills uh, because uh, probably of the fact that uh, either universities here so are mainly oriented towards so theoretical knowledge and uh, uh, the provision of the practical skills or really needs uh, some technical basis, and I mean laboratories or uh, investments or in the in the technology or so depending on the area. Uh, but uh, this kind of uh, um, luck uh, can be uh, somehow um, removed uh, in cooperation with the companies or through kind of agreements with. Uh, uh, various companies so that uh, they somehow uh, can provide uh, kind of training, even so uh, kind of uh, unpaid so training, or I, I mean, so the, the, the students uh, can go there and uh, uh, do some jobs for the company in order to improve their abilities, uh, which are related directly with uh, technical aspects, but also with communication uh, abilities or um, uh, critical so thinking or doing something abilities and so on. So a good cooperation between university and uh, uh, various companies so would be uh, a very good approach in order to uh, somehow uh, give these graduates uh, necessary skills to meet the, the job market. And we know, for example, in, in IT technology, so in, in the IT market, so the the graduates, so uh, apart from the theoretical knowledge, uh, they must have also some uh, practical skills in order to, uh, let's say, uh, to be able to do something practical for the company. So of course they can apply their knowledge and uh, uh, so to do their job, but uh, uh, using their uh, skills is also a very uh, critical, uh, strong critical point for them. And, uh, as for the uh, experience so, um, in, here in universities in Albania, uh, I've seen some experience so, uh, of universities or so cooperating with companies, but I, uh, I doubt that this kind of uh, cooperation has been so very efficient and uh, uh, because it must be part of kind of strategy. So, in order to uh, satisfy uh, on one side the interests of the university and on the other side the interests of the uh, of the company so in the job market if they meet uh, at some point so this would be uh, great but until now i haven't seen something like that but of course uh, uh, we we hope that uh, it will uh, be improving so in the in, in the near future so uh, we will have so a better uh, skills or graduates uh, in the in the job market may i may i um 
give some thoughts here uh, to um, Mr. Vila. First of all, uh, thanks. You you raised the discussion between universities and universities of applied science. So my uh, university is a university of applied science, and uh, this means we have all over Germany um, the same let's say nearly the same rules that, for example, in the bachelor program, there is an internship and there has to be a rule for the internship with the aims and a quality standard, um, how this, let's say, cooperation between the student and the company works and what is the outcome and so on and so on. And I also think you mentioned salaries for students. You said the students can go there and work to do something for the companies. I think it's also um, a part of uh, the, the benefit has to be on both sides. So um, our master students, um, I don't want to send them somewhere without being paid because I know that they are um, uh, on a really skilled uh, uh, level and if they are, let's say, three months in a, in a company, um, they, you can really give them a responsibility to something. So it, the salary also depends on the level of, of the students and I think um, a small salary is also a kind of respect from the company to the students. So if, if you move forward there with small steps, um, uh, it could also be a, a kind of respect for the students. And if you are respected in a certain way, maybe your motivation is also bigger than uh, if, if there's nothing behind. Um, and the other thing is, I would like to ask you if um, what your universities are doing um, in the sense of uh, accreditation. Are you also accredit uh, accredited in the uh, European community? So we have to do as, as a German uh, university, there is a, a quality assurance in the Euro European community and we have to follow this process every, I think it's every four years, something like that. So uh, thank you for pointing out some very uh, imp so important so issues. Uh, I would like to say that uh, I've studied in Germany and I think I know good the German system. So mm -hmm. I, I fully agree with the fact that uh, the, this, uh, let's say long-term master students or should go somewhere and they should be paid or at least get some financial benefits okay. from the company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my idea was only for a short term, so, and I mean, even one or two or three months at most, but if it is beyond that period, then uh, I, I fully agree that they should have some benefits and consider it as, as, as a time, so uh, they uh, spend, so in order to, uh, you know, to improve some things and, and their, so technical skills. And uh, uh, so w we must do exactly uh, so we must follow this approach here. And uh, I think that this is important to, uh, to regulate also the, the, uh, the cooperation or the, uh, the law aspects of, of this cooperation between the universities and, the, and these companies. So they, uh, they must treat these students or these graduates uh, as their uh, futuristic workers. And uh, um, also they uh, must create some kind of uh, um, a space for them uh, to, uh, to build their careers in these companies oh. uh, in order to become so uh, successful so in, in their uh, uh, long-term so, uh, plans. So about the accreditation of the university, as far as I am informed, so we got recently uh, uh, a six years so, uh, term, so uh, accreditation so but uh, if you are talking about the institutional accreditation yeah. because we have we have to go through another accreditation uh, procedure so which is an uh, accreditation of the uh, study programs and yeah this some this is something that we are going to do so in in, in a near future but uh, up to now so we we got this uh, uh, six years accreditation which is very good for the institution and uh, which makes this a really uh, very so trusted partners so or yep. in cooperation with other so institutional companies. 
Yeah, so the one thing is the institution, um, the university itself, and then the other thing is the, the study programs, and yeah. we also have to do that. Um, I, I was only raising this issue because you said um, you, you have to make sure about the, the internships, for example, what is going on in the companies and so on. And, and we were forced by the accreditation to make really rules and regulations for, let's say, a cooperation with the company with all the aims and, and everything inside. And if you have that and it's accredited, um, then it should work a little bit better with these rules. Yes, I think the university is working on it. So uh, in order to uh, create, let's say, the, the, the main frame for the, yeah. uh, for the process. And uh, uh, th this is, in fact, very important process because uh, we have to somehow adapt the curricula uh, also with uh, markets or uh, needs or yeah. demands. So that the knowledge that uh, the students uh, will will get from the university to be really useful, so uh, outside it. So uh, this is a very important process, and I think this is also the reason behind why the uh, it took somehow um, some long time so to uh, you know to start. And but I think so we will uh, complete it so successfully. It is not the nicest thing to do it because normally you want to be uh, uh, in the process of teaching and researching, but in the end, it's very good. In the moment where you are in this process, you, you think, oh my God, all these documents. But in the end, you are really looking who is your target group and your, your, your programs are getting more focused like if you are doing a strategy in in a company it's you are really forced to 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 think like that yeah yeah it's the the process itself is really uh demanding i mean yeah. there must be so specialist experts around to uh, to prepare the necessary documents and to and to to have a, a successful results at the end yeah. So, but uh, so something about the internship. So I know that in Germany, for example, at my time, so which is about so 10 years ago, uh, the, the bachelor students, or it was mandatory for them to, uh, to go to a company and to uh, make them, or to make their kind of uh, practical training or internship for at least six months, if I'm right. So th yeah. this was one of the condition for the graduation. So yes, and yes. this is this was absolutely very good because uh, the students had the opportunity to apply their knowledge or to develop their communication skills, uh, digital skills, or uh, uh, critical thinking. I don't know skills. And uh, the the most important are also the so-called so knowledge management skills, which means that. The knowledge is changing rapidly. Uh, so for us, for example, in, in IT area, uh, the knowledge of one year ago probably is obsolete nowadays. So we have to adapt so to manage this knowledge so very quickly to in order to meet the, uh, the requirements of the today market or um, I, I think this is a very important point. So your background is, is IT, right? Yes. Yes. So um, we, we had another project. It was only a small seminar of one term. And I, I um, had a cooperation with the destination for one term. Um, and it was in the, in the north of Germany. And we did a project. It was called reverse learning. This means that uh, it was communication and marketing. It was not IT, IT, but uh, let's say marketing instruments like Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. And young students from my course, they went into the destination marketing or management organization and tried to train elderly people who have no idea of social media to make it worth that they are using the communication tools. But the elderly also gave something <laughs> to the younger people, their experience in how they communicated in earlier times or things like that. It was a, it was a really nice project. Yes, uh, 
so in, in this regard, I, I would like to mention, so uh, when I was in Germany, for example, in our department, we, uh, we had a lot of collaborations so with other institutions, for example, in order to train the public administration mm -hmm. uh, uh, with regard to their digital skills or to train the, the, the police, for example, in cybersecurity area. And uh, so this is exactly uh, this uh, kind of, uh, uh, let's say kind of contribution to this, uh, probably an old generation, which is not uh, so uh, um, attached, let's say, uh, uh, quickly with the new technology and so on. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the, also one of the, uh, um, important missions of the university, so uh, to contribute uh, to uh, um, to um, different not only institution but also with uh, a part of the society. Yeah, and also different matters, uh, uh, methods. Uh, maybe it doesn't work all the time. I think cybersecurity is a thing where young people don't have a clue <laughs> because <laughs> they only use uh, the technology. Um, but maybe you have other methods, and uh, they they are faster, and and they let's say they have no fear. Um, this is what, what is my observation, that they don't have fear to try something. And the elderly people, they, they are more like, oh my God, what's happening if yeah. I press this button? Yeah? Um, and uh, if, if you put the two skills together and they work together in small projects, um, then maybe it works good for both of them. Yeah, well, the cybersecurity skills are very specific, so they are provided to, uh, you know, to specific institutions or to specific group of target group of people, so who are interested in it. But uh, uh, the 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 first project was so with the provision of this uh, assistance so to the administration, which is which were the you know the level of the people who were somehow afraid of new technologies or because of any wrongdoing so with with the system but uh, at the end so they were happy that they had the opportunity to get involved in this world of technology and most importantly to use it for their daily job yeah yeah it makes it more efficient and in the end uh, I'm sure you know that uh, uh, TAM model, technology acceptance. Um, for me, I, I work with that technology acceptance model. I, I um, show it to my students. We start with TAM and then in the end you are with the UTAUT model, um, unified technology acceptance. And it's, it's a kind of social pressure. Um, think of your mother um, when you are abroad, she cannot communicate with you if she don't know WhatsApp, Skype or whatever. Um, it's, it's complicated and my mother, so the grandmother of my son um, and my, my other sisters, we, we all, uh, um, uh, we learned my uh, parents, the grandparents, using Skype, using WhatsApp, to stay in contact with their yeah, uh, uh, grandchildren. And this was a great motivation for them because uh, there, there was heart inside. And if you start at that point, um, maybe some things are working better. Well, uh, uh, um, I would like to say something about the, it, it's amazing how the, new generation, the, the kids or the pupils or the students now are embracing technology. We see kids so playing with the smartphones uh, from <laughs> age of five, six. <laughs> so watching movies or uh, we, we have seen pupils so starting with the programming uh, and uh, we see that the, uh, let's say this age of technology uh, is always, is, is going, so is decreasing. So. Uh, let's say 15, 20 years ago. So we, we, uh, we saw only students so, uh, which, uh, who were involved in the, in the technology, but nowadays all the, the, the times have changed. And to be honest, so uh, this, this progress, so we'll do our jobs. So I mean, professor jobs very difficult because we will have in our uh, in auditors or 
students who uh, have already or have already started. So since uh, ten or more years ago, uh, with the technology, and they will demand more and more in the auditors so to uh, uh, not only to uh, to gain the knowledge from us, but also to apply it uh, after the graduation and. Uh, to, to really uh, meet the, uh, the job market demands and uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know Richard Socher. He's Richard the, Socher. Richard Socher, he's the, the, the guy, I heard an interview with him some days ago and he's living in, in uh, um, Florida and he is in the heart of the Silicon Valley and he is from the DDR and uh, GDR and, and he, he studied uh, linguistic and math and he's one of the leading um, AR uh, experts worldwide and he said the first language should be English and the second language what every child should learn is Python. Because yeah. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to become a lawyer, you you can structure your thoughts. If you can programming, if you want to become whatever uh, a professor, you structure yourself better. If you know how to program it, uh, it, it was a very good interview, and um, I'm wondering uh, when do the students in your faculty they they start with Python and in, or or do they come to the university and they already know it? So, uh, in fact, we expect our students to, to have so basics of uh, programming, for example, but uh, then here we uh, develop different skills depending on the uh, programming language. So, uh, I've, I've first recently Python has become really very, very popular language and uh, um, we, we teach them so in the master level. Uh, because in the bachelor level, so uh, the students are still need to uh, to improve their, uh, let's say, programming skills in their in in, in these uh, traditional languages, so uh, Java, for example, or mm -hmm. uh, C++, uh, to uh, to improve their uh, concepts or uh, um, coding skills and so on. But in the master level, so we. Uh, we are streaming through this most modern so languages so that the students so can, uh, uh, let's say, uh, learn so um, new things or, uh, or at most important, so to learn something uh, which is very useful uh, for them after the graduation. And the job markets really uh, offer so uh, a lot of positions for the programmers in these modern languages. And this is very important for the university to really uh, adapt and provide uh, uh, the necessary access to this uh, knowledge. So um, mm -hmm. programming um, and also other skills. So uh, uh, I think so the, the communication aspects uh, is very, very important because when you think about IT or uh, informatics or you suppose someone who stays uh, the whole day in front of computers and doesn't get so out of the room <laughs> for a long time, but uh, these graduates also uh, must face the the uh, the environments or the the, the social so aspects are to become really uh, to feel very comfortable in these environments and uh, to continuously to develop their uh, communication skills. So what I'm doing is normally working with design thinking with my students. And this means um, I, I really can feel it at the moment that you say people are sitting in front of the screen. I'm nearly uh, five, six months now in my home office, but it's <laughs> fine. I have a nice office, but I, I have to learn new, let's say new skills, how to do my teaching online. And um, we used a lot of creative things what you can use in the, in the online environment to communicate, to, to use different possibilities like in a workshop, for example. And um, the students really said that it is amazing um, what they learned in that time when in the beginning in March, they thought um, it's horrible to be alone at home. Um, we want to go and have coffee with our friends in the university and just chat and the, but in the end now they said they learned 
the remote work. And I think if we look forward, it is very important that we will have big teams all over the world working together, being creative, knowing yeah, how, how you can work, let's say you are in a time zone where you work during my night and uh, that we have, let's say, tools where we can connect to, let's say, my thoughts to your thoughts, but we don't need to be in the same room. And in the end, the project is brilliant. So uh, de definitely the, the pandemic has its, let's say, positive side so that it interconnects a lot of people around the world. And... Uh, uh let's say uh brought them so closer so through the virtual uh communication world i'm sorry for interrupting but we are running low on time so i have one last question for mr villa uh so uh professor villa is there any commitment from now on can we have more partnerships in 2021 for more practical experiences yeah yeah yes please uh, so the question is for me? Yes, the question is for you. Yeah. Is there any commitment from now on? Can we have more partnerships in 2021 for more practical experiences? Well, my, uh, the main goal uh, of our department of, or the university is to develop these uh, partnerships or collaboration with the company. I personally believe that this is very, very important for uh, for both sides, for university, for the graduates and for the companies. If they uh, can find in the market so uh, skilled people, so with rich knowledge, uh, the people or workers who uh, meet their requirements and demands, so we are very happy because we consider them as, as uh, uh, the result of a good study and a good approach to the, uh, to, to the job market. Thank you. So last word from my side, possible? Yes, sure. Okay, so if I can help in any kind, uh, Mr. Villa, um, reach out. We have, I think we have our email addresses. We can uh, talk and can see what I can, uh, let's say, support um, for your accreditation process or uh, building a program or an internship rules and regulations. We have a lot of these things. <laughs> Yes, sure. You are you are, you are welcome. So, vielen Dank. Sehr <laughs> 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 Good. Thank you very much for having us here.